okay so now uh, after the introduction to the construction of components using react uh, it's time to make a practical example and uh, i'd like to uh, try to re-implement uh, or rethink uh, our uh, web uh, um, exams course uh, simple exercise uh, inside uh, the, the react framework um, so let's first uh, uh, think uh, uh, about what we can what we can uh, obtain or accomplish um, the first step uh, in the um, in the work in this week uh, uh, is to uh, try to organize uh, the application according to a given set of components uh, and uh, try to give each of these components uh, the properties that it needs uh, uh, to uh, to work okay so next week we'll deal about state so but for the moment we'll try not to not to focus on that uh, it will be uh, added in a second step uh, so this is the the screenshot uh, that we had uh, more or less at the end of the um, of the express lectures we have an application uh, where i maybe modified it a bit uh, by adding some edit or delete functions to to the existing exams uh, plus we have this, the form for adding new ones and so on uh, this is not uh, a real screenshot for an application i just took very uh, various pieces of, of screenshots and they put them together in this image no? because this is what we want to achieve this is our final goal so i try to put that in a more or less visible format uh, but it's not a real application uh, if we want to obtain this uh, how can we uh, organize uh, our uh, react components so we should uh, uh, stop thinking at this page as a uh, simple web page but we, we should think that each portion of this page hmm, each portion should be generated by a different component and each component should be uh, clear uh, clear and understandable it may also be very small but has a very specific role so that it can also maybe re be reused in other contexts many times so we first uh, uh, do a, a job of decomposing this page into components and then we'll try to implement these components uh, i already have the project ready so we don't have to write all the code because it's really simple code uh, but uh, we'll we'll try to to to, uh, to see and comment comment that uh, piece by piece and uh, um, we we'll try to uh, also reason ask ourselves what kind of what properties each component needs uh, to receive uh, in order to render each part of the page but let's start so first step uh, draw a mock-up of your interface what you want to achieve the second step would be decompose this mock-up into components purely based on a visual and functional role okay so each part of the page should come from a different uh, rendering component and uh, uh, the third step would be uh, to uh, reason about which properties to associate to each of these components mm -hmm. and later on we'll see next week uh, how to add also the states and the state manipulation functions and so on mm -hmm. so let's go uh, by, by by steps so the first step uh, we'll try to um, these are single web page i can see it as decomposed in for example three different components so we here we have the app mm -hmm. so our uh, main application that is created by the creator of act uh, script uh, that we are uh, now familiar with and uh, i can imagine that this uh, application is made of three components one is very simple the title now, well for the moment this component is very simple because it just have, uh, has a title so it could be just an h1 node no? and the handing node but maybe in the future uh, the title will also contain the login information logout uh, uh, your profile or, or whatever other information you could uh, or you want to put in, into the, the the upper part of your application so maybe it's better already to start uh, defining an uh, a component that I call here app title for um, for this initial part of the page right now will be just one heading but later on may become something more complex then I have uh, uh, two parts uh, of the page one is i call it uh, uh, exam scores as a component and the other part uh, i call it uh, optional edit form hmm? uh, the idea is that uh, the page will always contain an exam scores uh, section or this table with the 
uh, with the list of, of, uh, of exams, uh, the editing and adding and deleting functionalities for those, uh, this will, will always be present. While the second part of the, of the page containing the form, it may be visible or not, depending. Depending, normally it's not visible. If I click the plus button to add a new, um, a new uh, exam, it should appear. And uh, uh, if I click uh, on edit, maybe should appear empty uh, with empty information. If I click on edit, maybe it should appear with pre-filled information coming from uh, the course that I, I asked to edit. Hmm? And uh, so I call that the uh, optional edit form because it's a, it's a component uh, that may contain or not uh, a form. So it's an edit form, but it really inside this form, there's a logic that decides whether it should be displayed or not. Hmm? So this optional edit form may, may display the form or display nothing, depending on the instruction that it gives uh, uh, from above. So it's always better to think at two levels. Uh, this is a component that is there, and in sometimes this component will not render, okay? So it will disappear. That's why I call it uh, optional. It's not because it's not always visible. And this is the first level of the composition. If I go forward, I see that it's, this uh, exam score uh, table may be divided into two portions. One is the table itself, and another is the controls for the table. And uh, right now we only have one control, which is plus. But maybe in the future we could have uh, uh, some something like uh, load or save or print, uh, something that uh, is applied to the table as a whole, to the set of exams as a whole. So it's, uh, it's, it's different uh, from these other controls uh, here that will apply to a single exam. Here we have some controls that apply to the table. So the exam scores component will contain a visualization component, uh, which is exam table, and a control component, and table controls. Maybe these are not the best names that I chose. Uh, I would <laughs> probably already want to change them, but for the moment I stick with those because they are consistent with the, uh, with the code, okay? Uh, so uh, the exam score we, we start uh, uh, seeing what these components do the exam scores component will just render an exam table followed by a, a table control and uh, the handling of the plus button will be a responsibility of the table control so if tomorrow i want to add a new control or i want to uh, change the the layout of the plus button and create something completely different I know which component uh, I, I need to, um, to modify. And maybe also, if this plus button uh, is needed in other part of my application, I can reuse this component. Hmm? While the exam table is something more specific that only makes sense uh, in this part. So let's also try to think, uh, is this functionality well defined enough uh, that I can reuse it in some other parts of this application? Hmm? That would be uh, useful. Uh, so table control right now is uh, very simple, but we can uh, continue to uh, decompose this exam table. This is just a table, you see, you, you, you might say, but uh, the table is composed of different rows. Hmm? So uh, we should have an object uh, describing every single row of the table, a component describing every single row of the table. We have one component, uh, which is the table overall and uh, many many components and did that this will be responsible for generating the layout for generating the headings uh, uh, the, um, the caption and so on that would be the table component the row will be responsible for generating for displaying information about a single course for example hmm? uh, every single row and so uh, since the uh, row will be replicated the row comp exam row component will be replicated many times uh, of course across the table but the row itself, maybe we can uh, divide it in two further components, uh, the row data and the row controls. Uh, maybe uh, we want to separate, uh, because this is just a display of a single uh, exam, maybe this uh, display can be reused in other places, always in the tabular form, so in other types of tables. Uh, maybe I, I, I want a print version of my exam table, so that this print version should not have these controls. So it's better to have the controls separated from the display, 
in, in, in different components. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, these are just uh, ideas, design ideas, or design trade-offs. I start, I'm starting from uh, an hypothesis, an idea of, an in, uh, of a user interface, and I try to decompose the user interface into components. Maybe this choice is good, and so we will finish the application and we won't need to, to change this. Maybe later on we'll find that the choices we made are not very good, so we need to, to shift the boundaries of, of some components, or create new ones, or merge uh, two components into one because uh, it becomes easier to manage the whole application. So there is no fixed rule here. Or call, we are in the in the in designing the software application, so that nobody will, can tell you how many classes you should decompose your model in. And the same is here: how many components you should decompose your uh, web page into. Mm, there's no fixed rule. So we try to do something that more or less fits uh, both the visual appearance and the functional scope of these components. Each component should be easy to describe by itself. A component is a good component if you can describe what the component does without referring to its container. So a component should not have too much knowledge about where it's being implemented, where it's being recalled. In that case, it will be from the uh, you know the functional approach that react is is pushing it would be a, a, a good component something that you can uh, render everywhere in the page or nearly everywhere provided this component will receive uh, the necessary properties necessary information for rendering itself hmm. um, so that would be sort of a of a simple rule uh, i'm asking myself can i describe this component the xm row the xm row component is a component that will render the result of a single exam in a tabular format okay so in a tabular format means that it can be inserted in any tabular envir environment but mm, maybe in this exam table and maybe in some other table but i am able to describe what the exam row component does without uh, um, requiring the understanding of what is the table the bigger table that contains these elements hmm? Uh, for the, the same for row controls. Row controls gives the normal controls for um, e editing and deleting elements in a list. So this list could be a table, this list could be a, uh, a table of exams, it could be a table of courses, it could be a table of students, uh, but these are the same kind, kind of controls. They will do different uh, functions, of course, uh, and so they will require something that will tell them the, the, uh, the effect of being selected. Uh, but more or less they will be the same so that we can reuse them and uh, I can describe what they do without specifying where uh, they will be uh, rendered uh, in, in the page. Mm -hmm. So if we try to replicate the same, uh, the same process into the lower part uh, of, the, of the picture, I try to, uh, this uh, optional edit form uh, could actually render an edit form or nothing. So it's a normal pattern here when you have a component that may be visible or not, or may be present or not, to wrap this component into a container that will handle the logic, the visibility logic. Is it visible or not? So that component has one task, the task of deciding whether the edit form should be visible or not. If yes, then the edit form will have the responsibility of showing, of generating the form itself. And uh, the edit form will not care about uh, uh, why or when uh, the reason why it's displayed and what are the conditions because it only has one job. Okay, somebody above me already decided that I should be shown, so let's show myself. And otherwise, uh, uh, the optional edit form will just return a null component that will not generate any HTML in the page. And if we want to proceed, uh, for example, the form could be also separated with separating the form data with the form controls if we want to, to go uh, deeper. And we see that the form data here uh, is actually very similar to the table row data that we had before mm -hmm. because they are working on the same information. Of course, in this case, in the, in the top part of the page is just display information, in the bottom part of the page is inputting information or modifying information hmm? but having different components that 
share the same representation of input data is something that can be useful hmm? and so it's better uh, they are more modular in this way and of course the controls may also be different because uh, i uh, just a uh, save button here but save might indicate adding or save might indicate uh, um, save the modifications hmm? depending so maybe we want to change the name of this button according to the reason why this form is needed whether to add or to edit uh, uh, a component hmm? so i i put them aside uh, uh, for the reason hmm? so this is the uh, kind of, of design i try to make uh, on our uh, uh, application as i said is not the only one i'm not claiming is the best one it's just one that serves our purpose for developing an example i'm trying to summarize all of this with this uh, uh, component uh, uh, tree hmm? so i have uh, the app that will contain title exam scores and optional exam form so the top part and the bottom part of the page uh, the exam score is uh, composed uh, we will render by composing exam table and table controls exam table will render by composing many exam rows and each exam row will combine row data and row controls so it's the same information that i, I, I draw without the background uh, uh, of, of the web page just to have the uh, the list of uh, of components that we need to implement hmm? so this is our sort of shopping list uh, this is what we, we need to get uh, to to complete uh, our application hmm? and so maybe we can start uh, uh, considering uh, each of them uh, we can start uh, top down hmm? so let's uh, have a look uh, um, at the code hmm? so i uh, so I modified, I, uh, this is the, the, the code of this example, a React scores uh, that you find uh, on GitHub. And uh, I try to start from the create React app uh, um, uh, basic application. I, I simplified it, I deleted what I don't need, what I really don't need. And uh, I have a very simple, let me uh, navigate with you in the public uh, uh, folder, there's only one index.html, nothing more. And uh, the index is basically the, um, the, um, the bootstrap page. So the page is only loading uh, bootstrap and uh, it has the root node for the React application embedded into a bootstrap container just for the layout uh, scope. So all these links that you see are for just for loading bootstrap. Right now I'm not lo loading any custom uh, uh, CSS uh, for this application. And then we know that the index.js uh, um, should not be touched. Uh, you only removed the importing of some CSS that they don't, I don't care. But basically index.js uh, loads my application hmm? and mounts the application into the root node. This part usually should not be touched because it's the core of, uh, of uh, uh, launching uh, the React framework. At this point, I can uh, go into the app. Hmm? Uh, what I did here, of course, we, I don't have a real application. So I want to provide uh, in some way uh, some information hmm, uh, for the application to, to be displayed. So the application is fake and works with fake data. So I have a fake database of courses that I just uh, store as an array in JavaScript. Of course, I will need to remove this and uh, link that to a real uh, database on the, on the, um, using the REST APIs. But for the moment, I'm focusing on the front end and so I'm faking this data. I assume they, uh, they are, I know them. And uh, the, the important point is that the only point where I know that this data is fake is here when I define them. All the other components uh, will be working with data that they believe is real. Okay, so they don't know, they don't access directly this information. They couldn't be, in a, they couldn't in any, uh, in any way, uh, but they are getting part of this information through properties. Hmm? So we are just showing something, just not to show a list of em empty names. Of course, we are putting some realistic data. And the same for the exam table here, no, these fake exams. Uh, it's also a list of exams that uh, uh, could uh, so, uh, fake the the, um, the initial state of our application 
of course there's a uh, there's a big difference that we'll appreciate next week uh, between these two uh, data structures uh, this one is fixed so the list of courses is not supposed to change dynamically the user cannot ch change them and they usually don't change uh, uh, automatically because, the, because they are no, there's uh, just a fixed uh, list of courses uh, and they are all, always the same so it's a constant a real constant in the in our in our application while the list of exams uh, is not constant because uh, a user can add a new exam of course by picking one of the courses then one of the real courses and setting a score and a date or the user can edit some exam hmm? so um, in this case uh, uh, this is not the final or the only uh, data structure it should be just the starting point so we assume that we are loading from the database this is the initial uh, version of the exams and these will will or can and will evolve when the user uses the application so why the second one is really constant the first one is uh, just uh, the initial version of a live data structure of a data structure that will need to change okay uh, uh, as I said, uh, these two will be replaced uh, by asynchronous calls to get data from the, the, the database. For simplicity, I remove the APIs here, the REST APIs here, uh, so that we can debug uh, the application uh, in an easier way, in a faster way. Hmm? But uh, will be, they, will be, they need to be uh, replaced with the real calls to the APIs. Okay, uh, apart from the fake data, the uh, app component uh, is uh, quite easy hmm? uh, the app with render uh, and uh, three so a component that is composed of three sub components so since we have three sub components uh, i need to wrap all of them into one divider into one component because return can only return one component so i have three here to return and uh, I cannot return all of all of, all, uh, all three of them. I will return only the container div that uh, also will have some children, app title, exam scores, option, exam, exam scores, as uh, our uh, diagram suggests. The app should return, which should construct in rendering, in the rendering method, uh, should construct uh, the sequence of these three components. Hmm? And this is what we are doing. And we are enclosing all of them into a div uh, that will also be uh, the, um, the the starting point of our application hmm? so that we contain the whole application so basically our application will contain div container and then root and finally below the root uh, we, there, we will have the, the, uh, the app div hmm? below that uh, it's all in the hands of the component so we have app title exam scores and optional exam scores hmm? Let's not look at the parameters for the moment. App title, uh, I implemented that in a in a separate file, hmm? and uh, since uh, it's a, for the moment is a very simple uh, component, uh, I just implemented that uh, as a as a function component. Uh, so I just define a function app title with the name and uh, returning in this case the heading your exams nothing more. Hmm? Uh, as you know, I should import React uh, in order. To for the JSX uh, uh, to be um, to be parsed correctly, and exporting the app title, uh, it's a waste, of course, creating a, an entire JavaScript file just for these two lines. Hmm? But just for the sake uh, of showing how I can cre create and isolate one component, hmm? and this component uh, I, it's, it's imported here. I import in the app title from uh, this code, and uh, and I'm using and uh, using it here. So this is the basic, uh, simple, simplest way. Um, if I, in the future, I need to make this component more complex, uh, adding new information, adding states, or maybe I need to convert it to a class component, I can do that entirely into this file, and the app doesn't doesn't care or doesn't see the difference, okay? Um, because just uh, everything is inside the component itself. Uh, the exam scores is more complex. Hmm? The exam scores uh, uh, is here, and it needs to render the exam table and the table control. The table control will be easy because it's just a plus button, but the, the, the top part here is a bit more and more complex to, to implement. Um, exam scores 
it's quite easy hmm, for the moment uh, to, to implement. Uh, let's, uh, for, for avoiding creating too many files, uh, I decided just to create one single file called examcomponent.js that contains everything else, every other component. So you see that the app is uh, importing from exam components, uh, the exam scores and the optional exam four, which are the only two components uh, that, that app.js needs uh, to be aware of. So if I want to change the implementation of exam scores later by decomposing that into different uh, subcomponents, uh, I'm free to do that. I don't need to change the app.js for that reason. Hmm? I don't need to import all the components, only the ones that are explicitly referred uh, in the body of the render function. But for, for, for avoiding creating too many files, I just created one exam component where I, uh, all, where I have all the components that I need. And uh, we start from the exam scores component, which is this function here. Um, so we are in our, in our diagram, we are here. The exam, the exam score should render the table and the table controls. So basically, it will return exam table and table controls. This will be nested inside the uh, app divider inside here. So inside, uh, uh, just after the title. Uh, in this case, I don't need to have uh, another div component to separate the two elements, uh, but since I need to uh, return two elements, I could use the, the the fragment syntax uh, to create an invisible component just for the sake of wrapping these two ones into a list uh, and this component will not be translated into the html of the page since i don't uh, want uh, uh, to apply any class or uh, have any uh, identification or inter intermediate component for that so i can leave it here uh, remember this is the syntax for react.react.fragment react uh, that allows me to return a fragment uh, containing many, uh, sorry, many uh, sub-components. Uh, sorry, I lost, uh, I clicked, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the two fellow components uh, here, the two children, wrapped in a, into a container that will disappear. So it's a temporary container. And uh, so maybe have a look at the exam, exam table. Uh, the exam table should render the table so uh, we render the table the class names are just for uh, for making uh, bootstrap happy and rendering the table with the right layout uh, remember that we are using class name and not class uh, because we are uh, into a jsx we are not into an html code and so we need to mangle these uh, these names i'm rendering some uh, heading of the table and then the body of the table is a list of exam rows so this uh, is the code we'll, we'll see this uh, in more detail in a moment this code will just uh, uh, create one exam row per each component oh, sorry per each exam okay so i'm instantiating many exam row components from starting from uh, the exams uh, uh, array the exam row again is, is defined here it's very simple we'll just contain the exam row data followed by a row control here and all of them wrapped inside the table row so it's very simple container that puts together two components and the key component here is exam row data which is here uh, defined here as a function that will show the real data hmm? so let's start from this one this one is the component that will really show these numbers or this text for one row so what information does this component need this component needs the name of the exam the score of the exam and the date of the exam three pieces of information and so uh, it needs to receive them as a property so we are assuming that this component will receive a property called exam and this exam will be an object containing at least a name a score and a date hmm? um, this is what uh, uh, so we, we we created the components by working uh, uh, top down 
and then when we have the component uh, we ask ourselves what are the information that they need here in this component and so we will work our way up to uh, specify the parameters that each component needs and at the top level uh, they will pick from the fake data that we have or in general they will pick from the database mm -hmm. so we are constructing the hierarchy of components and now we are asking ourselves two questions in parallel basically one, one is easy how to render the components so what other sub components do we need to put together but this is basically writing code corresponding to this picture so it's nothing difficult hmm? okay we need to format the divs the tables and so on but it's uh, layout issues hmm? but once we have the components in place uh, we start from the ones that really needs to display some data and in this this line means two kinds of information one is this is a child of xm row okay but also means that this xm row data receives some information from xm row in form of uh, properties so what is this information for the xm row data it's easy because it's, it's just uh, the information about a, a single exam I don't need to receive the whole array I don't even care whether there is more than one exam in the universe okay uh, I only need an exam object with the three attributes that they need to show that's it so the this component is happy if it if it received this exam object as a parameter and who is going to provide uh, this object with the exam object so this component with the exam object well of course uh, the color and the color is exam rows exam row sorry so the exam row component is responsible for giving to the exam row data the property called exam so here we have a property called exam in this line uh, where do i get this property from well uh, the exam row is just a stupid component so the uh, every information about this exam should be received from the exam table there hmm? so uh, if we want uh, to modify this slide just to show what is happening uh, i'm saying that here i have a property called exam that needs to be passed with these three attributes and this same property should come from there is needed uh, this exam property is needed in exam row data and so exam row will have to provide it and the exam row mm, doesn't have any way of creating this information other than receiving it from its parent from the exam table and this is what we are seeing in the code uh, the exam row is passing a new property exam to exam row data by taking a, prop, uh, a property called exam which is received as a parameter from from the color of exam row which is uh, uh, the exam tables uh, component this is the most component in our the uh, most complex component in our in this uh, uh, simple example uh, so in a way the exam row should provide to uh, the so the yeah the exam table component should provide to the exam row a property called exam hmm? this may be easy hmm? uh, there are two issues or three issues here hmm? uh, one is the one is easy, one is easy hmm? uh, because uh, um, where do i get the information about the exams from well of course i get them from my properties from the properties of the uh, exam table i should receive the list of exams hmm? and so uh, exam table is called by app no sorry by exam scores so let's go up one level uh, exam scores is passing an exams property not the plural s because it's the, the list is passing the, the exam that is coming from its color so exam score is called by um, by app and the app is passing the exams 
so everything comes from up that takes this fake exams list and gives it to the exams course in form of a property which is called exams plural if exam scores just takes this property uh, and moves it to uh, recopy to uh, um, the proper exams and exams will uh, and these exams will go to the exam table so where is this information coming from from there how is it coming from it is coming from of in the in the form of an array hmm? an array of fake the, the fake exams array and now we can just uh, uh, use a map function on the exams array let's uh, focus on the state in in, in in 30 seconds right now just focus on the map uh, exam map will transform each exam into an exam row component so we have an array of exam objects and we are transforming with the map function each exam object into a exam row component here, uh, technically it's an element uh, of uh, using the component exam row and it's, it's passing to this to each row the exam object so we have the array called exams plural i'm decomposing this array into its element for each element i create one exam row with the property exam there is a bit uh, more uh, work here because uh, uh, basically because the fake exams uh, doesn't contain the course name only the code score and date but in our picture we want also to show the name of the course here and so we need in some way to provide to the um, data row here to the table exam row data we need to provide also the name the name is not in the fake uh, uh, exams but is in the courses so i need to do some extra work because when i need to pass the exam object is some object should have the course code the course uh, uh, score the exam score the exam date and the course name and so what i'm passing here is a, a copy of the exam properties the spread operator with objects just uh, uh, copies into the new object that i'm constructing here all the properties of the object e so sorry which is the individual element of the array that is being mapped you see that this here is the same here it means an exam and so the uh, in this way i'm copying the object and creating a new copy of the object plus a new property and this new property name is the name of the course which is taken from uh, a lookup table course names this course names is a lookup table that I created in the father component here in the exams course. You see that I created a very simple object, course names, that will map every course code into a course name by using the courses information. So exam score receives uh, props.courses all the courses and all the exams so let's try to put that into into our picture it's becoming a bit uh, more complex uh, in our picture we have uh, exam table that is receiving from the exams course the list of exams plural i put it here because otherwise it would be too too, too close and uh, or, or maybe i can make more no i cannot make more space okay let's put it here the exams and uh, another information which is uh, the course names hmm? so in this way the exams is, a, is an array of exam and so on the only problem is that each individual exam doesn't have the name in inside and we have the course names array uh, it's a map basically it's an object that we use as, as a dictionary as a map uh, that we can use to construct this object here so this is the 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 two parameters that are being transferred into this line i'm putting it there so that they can be uh, more readable so this line here tra transport these two properties 
and these properties are coming from the exam scores component that will receive of course the list of exams the and the list of courses here so i don't need the list of courses to create the table data i only need the course names to be mapped so there could be maybe a better a place or a better way of providing this information but the idea is that i'm providing to each component only the information that it needs to do its job so from here on i don't know the list of courses i don't know how many courses there are i don't know how many exams there are here also i don't need to have all the courses but only the exams but some information about the courses just for display reasons because otherwise i cannot pass i don't have the information for building the exam property exam dot name property here and uh, uh, who needs to have all the information about the ex list of exams uh, and the list of courses is of course the exam scores component hmm? because from the courses it can create the course names that will pass to the table so we are trying of course as we go up into the hierarchy uh, we are uh, closer and closer to the global data structure so we have all the visibility but we don't have the detail we don't need to manage the detail of every single element when we go to bottom level uh, components uh, each of them will only have uh, smaller data to deal with so it doesn't care about all the data that we are managing only a portion but of course it will need all the details about the data hmm? and uh, and along the chain we are decomposing the data structures into the individual bits and pieces pieces that are needed uh, inside each of the components hmm? so we are decomposing the data and we are processing them mm, in uh, in different steps in different uh, stages hmm? uh, again i'm not really sure that choosing to create the course names uh, dictionary in the exam scores component is a better choice or worse than creating that into exam table or in, uh, in the app uh, again it's a design choice uh, uh, we start implementing and then if uh, we see better solution we can shift information around hmm? the idea of this exercise is try to uh, understand what kind of information we need to make explicit at every step first we, we made the components explicit and then and then we are making the properties explicit and each component this is another, another rule from the react philosophy each component should only define the properties and should only receive the properties that the component itself needs so the component shouldn't care about what information my container has i only should care if i'm a component about what do i need to render you remember the goal of the component is rendering itself what do i need what information do i need to render so these are my props these are the properties I need to receive. How to compute these properties is not my problem. It's the problem of my container. So my container, in turn, will ask it, uh, itself, uh, how do I compute the property that I can pass? And so I will need some properties myself from above with the information that I need uh, and some computation, and then we'll generate the properties from below. In some cases, it's just a pass-through of the properties. In some other cases, it's some computation. So maybe simple computation may be more complex uh, we uh, should remember hmm, that a component uh, from the I, I use the word computation um, so the computation is repeated every time the component is re-rendered so if we are uh, considering the performance of the application in this case this operation this cycle to create the course names array will be repeated every time exam score is re-rendered because it's a functional component and so the render function is all the component in in some other cases for example when we have a class component uh, let me pick an example here if uh, for example the exam table if we have some computation out, outside the render function will only be applied once or when the properties change hmm? okay so uh, I, I said that there are three details to, to discuss about the exam table component one is uh, uh, we need to receive a list and decompose the list with the map function okay the second was uh, we need to add the name attribute and this uh, led us to all these uh, 
um, how it's called uh, course names uh, array that we needed to compute in the in the component above and the third and more important uh, um, information is that uh, uh, the list of exams is going to change so we should have a single component in our application let's go back to the diagram a single component in our in our application that knows what is the current list of uh, scores the app has the fake data the initial value but we should decide which component should store the information about the scores uh, should it be exam table should it be exam scores should it be app so uh, it's not an easy choice uh, at this moment we decided to put this information into the exam scores so the exam scores will contain the state with the exams with the current exams so it's a state variable i'm not writing that into the the lines i'm writing that inside the components so let's let's pick a color that is readable inside the component a yellow for example so what i'm doing here is saying this component exam scores uh, will be the location where the current list of exams uh, is stored the current list of exams means uh, uh, initially i'm taking a copy of the fake exams that app will provide me and so we have this exams property here which should probably be called uh, the initial version of the exams And uh, so app only knows about the initial set of exams. And while the courses is just a fixed, uh, a constant uh, uh, array, so it will never change. The, the real courses will never change. The real exams will change, but of course the initial version will not change. It's just a constant. When we, uh, really, we, when we really implement the application, of course, it will be changed because it cannot be loaded by, uh, from an array. And then the exam scores will initialize a, dynam a dynamic variable, so something that needs to change, need to evolve in time when the user adds new exams, when the user deletes exams and so on, they, it, it, they need to change. And since the properties cannot change, they should be stored at state variables. So right now we are not going to mutate state, but for the, for the moment we are just trying to, to, to use it and to, to, to decide where the state is stored. Uh, the idea of React is that the state should be moved uh, to the component that is the father of all other components that need information based on that state. So it could be here, it could be in exam table, maybe it could be in app. I don't need to move it in app, for example. Why? Because everything in the right hand side of, this, uh, of the page, on the bottom side of, of the page, doesn't need to have uh, information about the exams. This is just the, the form. The form has information about the courses, not about the exams. Okay, so it would be the, the wrong place to put the exams here because this would uh, provide or um, would be too big, too big. Uh, it, it would be applied to a too, too wide scope that is not needed. But every component here, below here, probably needs uh, this information. And so we have this information stored here. And so the exam scores has a double responsibility now. Uh, the first responsibility, of course, is rendering the content. But the other responsibility will be to manage the current state of the exam. How to create <coughs> a state uh, component inside our, comp in a, a state uh, variable, inside a set object, inside our component is easy we just have to assign the state in the constructor of the object itself so this dot state equal creates the state makes uh, this component stateful right um, and in this case uh, the state is created by making a copy of the exams array remember we should make a copy because the exams uh, is a property, is a proxy, and so is immutable. You cannot change the properties. 
we we make a copy because we need to add or delete or modify uh, the exams so we create a new array containing a copy of the element from the initial values of the exams hmm? uh, okay should these variables should be the initial uh, props dot exams is the initial values and the state dot exams is the current value right now we don't have any mechanism for changing this yet but at least we recognize that this is the variable part of our application the only variable in our application that will change hmm? and it's a state variable and we decide to put that into the exam table this is the reason also why we we had the, we have for the moment to define the exam table as a class component uh, instead of a function later on when we study the react hooks uh, we'll see how to create state also in a functional component but not for the moment hmm? we make just one step at a time okay so uh, right now we copy the initial values of the exams into the state state.exams and this is why by creating the children we are iterating over the state of the object this dot state dot exam here this is the current list of exams that we use to create the rows of the table so whenever we add the new exam to this state uh, dot exam uh, array th this component will generate one more row if i delete an exam this component will generate one less row and if we modify an exam in this state variable uh, the component will render a different exam row from before hmm? and so this is what uh, makes uh, this table dynamic because the content of the table is computed starting from a variable which is dynamic and of course if this variable change these components will be rendered differently their properties will be different and of, of course uh, uh, by going down into the hierarchy of component uh, this, these different properties will change the difference in the content of the table and so on um, so we are rendering the table depending on some internal state of the variable right now we don't know how to change it but we are using it hmm? uh, an the another detail is that uh, the um, key sorry this is for a different example I have nothing to do with this one sorry um, the uh, exam row has a, uh, also a key attribute that has nothing to do with the passage of properties so we decided that the exam uh, row needs an, just an exam component and an exam property sorry and is passed as this exam attribute key is needed by uh, by map actually or by the fact that here we are rendering a list uh, of items and the list of items for for being uh, man uh, easily managed by by react uh, should be able should have uh, each element uh, each, uh, each item in the list uh, tagged with a different key hmm? so that uh, when we are adding a new exam maybe we are adding it on top or in the middle or in the bottom uh, react can compare the previous set of keys with the new set of keys and see how to when it's com computed the differences of the, of the previous and next uh, virtual dom it knows actually which nodes to have to modify and so it's it's what enables the mo the update of the dom uh, to be uh, efficient whenever we have a list of elements that are of the same type uh, each of them should have a key in order to to ease the matching process between the old and the new and the diffing of the different uh, uh, virtual doms so this uh, is an attribute which is used internally by react uh, will not it's not available to the exam row components so it's a bit strange because we are setting an attribute that is not part of the properties of the component okay um, and so uh, if we don't do the, this if we don't put the key component uh, we will see a warning in the inspector in the um, in, in the browser the browser will show a warning uh, you have a list without uh, uh, in, uh, at least in development mode uh, like we are uh, it will give us a warning uh, to avoid uh, or to, uh, to remember us to add the key it's not an error it's not very visible but if, if you open the console in the browser you'll see that um, okay that's this we, we that's the 
conclusion basically of the uh, initial part okay we only have the uh, one component left which is table controls which for the moment is very stupid table controls uh, is here it's only one button with an icon for the add button icon add is a uh, is just an icon that i an svg icon that i copied pasted i, I assigned that to a variable in order to have a, a cleaner code in the in the render function so it's just a button the difference is that uh, uh, we know that this green button should disappear whenever the form for inserting a new element will appear so uh, this uh, control may be shown or not depending on the mode in which the application is so in this case we have one property which is called uh, mod mod that is given to table controls uh, to know uh, whether we are uh, just viewing the table and so the plus button is needed or we are editing or inserting a component uh, and so we, this means that the, the form is shown and of course we understand that also this form will need this mod information and uh, uh, so uh, if the table controls are shown then the exam form will not be shown and vice versa depending on the mode of the application and since these two uh, is the same value that should be passed to both components uh, we already understand that we will need to come also from above so we need to come from here from here and will be a responsibility of the app uh, to change this node this mode which is the editing mode of the application uh, and the form is also easy uh, even because okay, right now the button doesn't have any action so if we click the button nothing happens huh? because we are just displaying the page in the next week we will add the dynamic behavior but there's already enough work in, uh, in designing and implementing all of this uh, the last part uh, optional exam form exam form and some form data is also uh, much easier so uh, optional exam form will just uh, display nothing if uh, the mod is viewed so if the uh, we are viewing the table and so the green button will be displayed and the form will not be displayed so this is a mechanism for showing one or the other alternatively um, and so it doesn't uh, render anything or it will render a, a form data and form controls component hmm? so i I made a shortcut I didn't create the exam form component itself uh, because I was lazy or or because I didn't read the picture correctly and so I'm creating directly this this part uh, here inside the jumbotron to for make the big gray box and it will uh, uh, show the exam form data and exam form controls what information that the exam form data need hmm, for operating uh, basically we already know from the previous ex exercises that we need the list of courses so the exam form data needs the list of courses to populate the select and so we are passing this information and for creating new courses is the only information that we need for opening a, an empty form in which we can insert a, a new exam we just need to know the list of courses but if we want to reuse the same form for editing an existing uh, exam we should also have the information about which exam we need to edit for initializing the form itself hmm? so uh, this property is always needed uh, to populate uh, the select uh, drop down this property is only needed if we are editing uh, an existing exam and is not needed uh, if we are just inserting creating a new one uh, the form data uh, is uh, just below here i declared it as a function is it's a bit boring because it's just the, all the uh, html element all the form elements we have a select uh, which is the drop down menu um, uh, that contains all the options and the options are a list of elements that are obtained mapping the courses so this props courses is an array of courses we know that it comes uh, from uh, uh, here exam form as uh, courses 
for exam form data sorry it's like that uh, okay of course you see it's here the mod actually was there okay it's there uh, the courses are available here and an exam is uh, it may be present depending whether we are editing or not okay um, so the courses uh, are used to generate all the uh, options in the menu and then we have the input uh, for the score the input score and then we have the input for the input date we can so pre-populate uh, predefine the content of the form element with an initial value which here with that in uh, in uh, jsx is always called default value in the next week we'll see more details about how forms are handled in react so for the moment it, but we just mentioned that every time we set a default value this is the initial value of the element so we can pre-select uh, the, the drop-down menu to a, to a specific item uh, we can preload the, the score with that was that with the, the old uh, value default value and uh, also we can uh, load the date with a default value if the props.exam is defined then this value will be assigned if the props.exam is not defined we will we'll get a null and null and so this uh, we won't have any default and so it will be um, just uh, um, empty it will be an empty form okay so uh, very simply by using the default value attribute we are creating a form that may just be an empty form or a form that can be pre-populated pre with the uh, exam object hmm? uh, with the content of the exam object hmm? course uh, score and date and this is what uh, uh, enables the for, uh, form data to display this part of the page here hmm? these three elements may be empty like here we don't have any score or may have the score of, of an existing element and then okay the form controller are just two buttons right now they're simple they will become more complex of course when we uh, add uh, um, interaction so we'll add uh, event handler on this uh, on these buttons okay so this uh, uh, finished our overview of the code uh, i chose not to write it uh, directly because uh, my many components are just uh, long or, uh, or boring uh, but the key parts are where we generate the lists uh, always remember the keys uh, when we reason about the properties also is the, the, the important part of this example and uh, uh, where and what state uh, we decide we see that all these applications for the moment only has one component on all the state all the others don't need the state for the moment hmm? maybe it will become more complicated when we add interaction and so just to uh, to satisfy ourselves uh, this is uh, uh, the rendering of this uh, application in uh, uh, live uh, it's live uh, partially live because of course if you click everywhere you, nothing happens uh, because we don't have any event lander uh, registered yet hmm? but we are showing this list of exams that we defined in the app here so if, if you want to be sure that it's, uh, uh, it's live uh, we put a 31 to software engineering and we see that uh, uh, the interface renders immediately so you you can believe that it's live code is not just uh, <coughs> a fake uh, web page uh, you see that this uh, uh, form has been preloaded with the name of uh, software engineer right now it's a bit fake because this button is shown at the same time at the as the form because it needed to to develop and to debug it and so i need to show them hmm? but actually when i'm uh, recalling the components uh, i'm passing the mode so in the case uh, and i is that i'm passing different mode but if i decided in both cases sorry the mod is view then we see that this component disappears when we click the plus the mod would be probably add and so the same mod will be passed to both components and we and the button will disappear and the form will appear right now we are doing that by modifying the code but this is what we are going to to do next uh, when we uh, have the, have the 
um, all the interaction uh, set up in the in, in the code itself uh, we i passed the exam you see that uh, uh, already copies uh, the information from the you see the two for the tech uh, for the third exam if i remove this property uh, the form will be rendered no there will be a, sorry there will be an error uh, yes because in this case the object is now uh, i need to put a check into the component so i need to to to, to put a control in order to uh, avoid uh, using an empty object so in this case there's still a bug i will just correct it uh, uh, before i push the final version to, to github in order so that the form will behave correctly even if this property is uh, is missing uh you know the, it's easy because i just have to define the default property as we saw in the slides uh, the default value for the exam property i will initialize an object uh, with the three fields without any any value and so it will uh, uh, initialize correctly uh, the um, the form with empty fields okay uh, so uh, all this part uh, uh, the fake exam fake courses and the mod that i'm modifying by hand uh, is just uh, uh, because uh, our application is not finished uh, and so i need to test what happens and how the different components react uh, to different uh, um, parameters given to them hmm? but as you see all the rest of the of the application doesn't know that all this information the mod the courses and the exams are fake they just behave like they were real data they don't provide information uh, interaction but they provide visualization for the moment so i uh, limited uh, into app.js all the fake part all the development part but all the other components are just designed without knowing that we are still unfinished or we are still working with the with fake and dirty data it's, uh, it's important because now we can isolate uh, then the interaction with the server side and the management uh, of the whole application by working only on app.js or other components that we will we will develop but the other components that we have here uh, don't need to be changed for this reason when we move from fake data to real data of course they will need to be changed for the interaction but this is the the job of next week so uh, for for today this is uh, the kind of process uh, that we need to have interface break into components, uh, start implementing the components, uh, deciding the properties, and compute the properties that are needed for uh, rendering each uh, uh, sub-component. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the goal for this week, and this all will be also the goal for the lab uh, of this week, of, uh, of next uh, Friday morning. Okay, so I will just push, uh, correct the error and push the code, uh, so that you can also uh, have a look at that, uh, uh, possibly uh, in the next days. Thank you and good evening.